to introduce you to how to use the Scratch Project Editor. So right now I am on the Scratch website, I am signed into my account, and I am going to click on the top right hand corner of the screen create. I'm actually going to open it in a new window. So today I'm going to just introduce to you this code blocks that you can use the different tabs, the different sections, the different preview windows that are in the projects editor. So I'm just gonna quickly run down for you how to use the project editor and I'm going to also review for you how you can save your work and some of the different features available when you are using this account that we created, not that's a little bit different than our CS First account. So while I'm waiting for this to load, it's saying creating project, creating blocks, so we're going to start on the left-hand side of the screen. I'm going to try and work from the left-hand side of the screen to the right as I explain some of these features. So there are three tabs on the top. There's a code tab, a costumes tab, and a sounds tab. So on the left-hand side, we are clicked on the code tab. And I know I'm clicked on the code tab because it is light white. And then these other tabs are gray because they are in the background. And the different coding blocks are sorted by colors. So these different blocks have a notch and it kind of looks like a puzzle piece because the blocks are stacked on top of each other to give our project some actions, some codes, and some of these also have a big bubble on the top because these cannot be attached to the bottom. So you have to think about how the shape of the blocks will work together to organize our code. Some of the blocks have a hexagon shaped block. Some of the blocks have round shapes. So they all work together like puzzle pieces and they are sorted by color to help you code your sprites. So the sprite that is preloaded in your project is the orange cat. I'm going to click over into the costumes tab and the costumes tab shows that there are two costumes for our orange cat. The costume number one has straight legs. The costume number two has bent legs. And I can use the Costumes tab to edit my sprite. So if I want to change the color of my sprite, I can click on the paint bucket. I can choose, maybe I want to have a pink cat. And I can change the color of my sprite by clicking through. So now I have Costume 2. In costume one, I'm gonna change both of them so that they match. So I can use the costumes tab to edit my character sprite. I can use the sound tab to add or edit sounds for my sprite. When I'm looking at the code tab, there is a giant dialog box that takes up most of the space in the middle of the page. And this dialog box is editing the code for this cat sprite. So the sprite cat, I can click on the code blocks and I can drag them into my project to start giving my cat some commands. So I can add sound. I can make things happen when I press certain keys. So right now I put three blocks and I stacked them together. So you can notice that when I click on the one on the top and drag it, they all stay together. If these blocks are separated, if they are not connected like a puzzle piece, nothing's gonna happen. So if I click on my space bar, when space key is pressed, nothing's attached. But if I attach these blocks and then I hit my space bar, he moved, and it meowed. So little kitty moves and meows when I hit the space bar. So the reason why this code works is because all the blocks are touching and it runs the program in sequence. 
maybe I don't like this cat spray or I need somebody to be hanging out in my project with my cat, I can use this button that is a cat's face with a little plus and I can look at all these pre-made sprites. So maybe I am interested in animals. So I will click on the animals. And there are all of these pre-made sprites. So I'm just gonna choose one. I'm gonna choose the monkey. And now I have two sprites, but all of those codes that I was writing here disappeared. Now I'm working on adding some code for this monkey. So when I click and drag these different codes, different actions will happen. So I've explained so far the code, costumes, and sounds tab, the dialog box where you put your code blocks in a stack, down here, the sprites dialog box. And the last thing I need to explain to you is the stage. So the stage is the background. It's the backdrops. And when you click on stage, the costumes tab becomes the backdrops tab. So when I click on backdrops, it's going to give me some options. And I can draw my own backdrop or I can click on choose a backdrop and choose from a pre-made backdrop. So I'm going to click on blue sky and whoa, I can be editing these elements that are already here with color, just like how I edited my sprites. And then I can go back to the code tab and I can add some code to the background. So if I need to do something like sound effects or if I want to change colors from a background, I might click and drag some of the code here and I know I'm coding the stage because there is a little picture of the stage in the top right hand corner of the screen.